Hi and welcome to this uh, Ableton Live tutorial on how to create a, uh, a bass instrument or any instrument for that matter. <clears throat> uh, so what I'm going to show you today is how uh, I created three different uh, bass instruments and then combined them into uh, one instrument rack and set up a selector here through the map mode and by selecting a value, a different value, uh, you'll hear a different uh, bass style. Uh, let me just uh, show you how that sounds like. Okay, so let's get started. I'm gonna create a new live document and first what you need is you need uh, samples in this case a bass samples um, for each note of the instrument We're gonna start off with a empty instrument. Uh, actually, it's a, a empty sampler, which I'm later on gonna turn into a simpler. But we're gonna start with a sampler like that. And over here is where you drag your sample files. Uh, if you have, like, as you can see, there's a, a quite a few files, there's like 42 files. I'm not going to use all of them. I'm, I'm going to use a, uh, a range and I'm going to let Ableton uh, kind of fill in the gaps for me uh, automatically. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select uh, all the, the uh, B files and I'm going to select all the F files like this, holding down control key. Here we go. Now I'm just going to drag and drop them into the the, uh, the sampler. As you can see, it now says a seven of seven samples selected. If I open the zone, there they are. Um, next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to set the range for these files, which is uh, each file is going to uh, instead of one node, it's going to play a few nodes. In this case, it's going to play this uh, uh, B file is going to play from B all the way up to E and uh, F is going to play all the way up to uh, A sharp so I'm going to select all the files then I'm going to set the range so this first file is going to start at B0 all the way up to E1 like that I also need to set the root key. As you can see here, uh, there's small uh, R's here, and I need to shift those. So align them like that. So now it's going to play this file. The root key is going to be the B, and it's going to transpose those automatically all the way up to E. Now I just need to move each separate file to the correct starting point, like this. And if I now play on my MIDI keyboard, I should actually hear the... Oops. Set it to the right range. Okay, if I enable the auto key here, as I play, uh, it will automatically select which file it is actually playing. So now it's playing this one. If I go back, you can 
and see it switch between those files. Okay, now for some more adjustments. Adjustments that I make here will apply to all the files. So, the global filter, I'm gonna up the volume to like minus 5. Uh, if I check the velocities, if I play silent like this, or loud, there's no difference in volume. So if I increase the volume velocity here to like something like 40 percent, you'll notice the difference. Another thing I'm going to do here is set the sustain to like minus 18, increase the decay to like mm, I think 16 seconds, it's not 16 milliseconds, there we go. Basically, that's about it. Just change this, no re-triggering. Four samples to do the trick. Um, anything else? Let me check real quick. Mm, no, I think that's about it. So, there you have it. That's like uh, a bass instrument in no time. So now I have my uh, sampler and I'm going to convert this into a simpler instrument. Just right click select sampler to sampler. Now I have my simpler inst instrument and I'm going to save it into my library. Uh, I have a folder here with uh, a few other instruments. Just going to drag and drop it in here. Uh, it's going to save it. It's, uh, I already have one with the same name, so um, uh, it's going to automatically re rename it for me. Um, okay, that's it. Now right click again and select group. Now this is going to make a new instrument rack and it added my uh, simpler instrument to the rack. I'm going to rename this as well. There we go. Because what I want to do is I want to. I already created these uh, similar, uh, simpler instruments, but with uh, different wave files, of course. So I'm just going to drag and drop them in here. Just going to add them. So now I have like three uh, bases in here. One, two, three. So if I would play on the keyboard now, you would actually hear all three bases at once. It's not going to be pretty. Of course we don't want that. Um, I'm going to do one more thing and that is I'm going to add a... another reverb. I'm going to add a limiter. And I'm going to add them to all three instruments, rather than to the instrument rack. Oops, sorry. Of course, then I'll be able to uh, create a macro that sets the volume for all three of them at once. So, now let's click uh, the chain here and it says zero. What I want to do is set up a macro that controls this uh, chain slider uh, value and so I'm gonna set up a few uh, ranges like that. There we go. So, 
when a certain value is selected, Ableton will play uh, the actual instrument that falls within that range. So do something like that. 42. There we go. Divide it into three. So, okay. Now click on map mode over here. Select the top here and click on map. There we go. Now it's just change selector. Good. I'm gonna rename this. So exit map mode, rename this to base selector. There we go. But now, as you can see, the slider moves. Isn't that cute? Okay, let me grab a some noise. So if I enable this auto here, you will see that it actually switches between the three instruments. So let me play that. So now there's one more thing I want to do is <coughs> uh, map another macro. Let's hide this uh, to the volume or the gain of uh, the limiter gain of each of the instruments. So I'm gonna go back into map mode. Gonna select the gain for the first instrument. Click on map. Select the second one. Gain. Map. and map. Exit map mode and now you can see as I change the value here it actually changes here in the limiter and it does so for all the instruments. Set it back to the base value of 3 and last but not least save my instrument my newly created instrument rack. I already have one, so I'm not sure. Just drag and drop. Oh yeah, there we go. Voila. It's gonna copy uh, required files. So now if I would start a, let's save this first. If I would create a new live set. So now I can just drag and drop this in here. And there we go. Go back to my MIDI file. That's it. Thanks for watching.